Next task is to figure out what our equilibrium condition says about how much of each product and reactant remain in a system at, when it's at equilibrium. So remember we have uh, this equilibrium condition. The chemical potentials have to add up to zero if I multiply them by their stoichiometric coefficients. And for the example we've been working with, H2 and Br2 react to form 2HBr. What that means is the chemical potentials of the reactants, H2 and Br2, must add up to the same thing as the chemical potential of the products, two molecules of HBr. So since those two, uh, three species, the reactants and the products, are gases, as a first step, let's see what we can understand about this equilibrium condition if they behave like ideal gases. So remember, what we know about the chemical potential of an ideal gas is that the chemical potential at some particular pressure is equal to the standard chemical potential, chemical potential under standard pressure, plus RT log of that ratio of whatever the pressure is to the standard pressure. So uh, as the pressure changes, the chemical potential changes as well. So if I take that result for the chemical potential of an ideal gas and insert it into our equilibrium condition for H2 and Br2, chemical potential of H2 plus the chemical potential of Br2 adds up to twice the chemical potential of HBr. Now I can collect terms. If I move the standard chemical potentials over to the right-hand side, I've got twice the chemical potential of HBr and terms like this chemical potential of Br2 move over to the right uh, with a negative sign. So twice the chemical potential of HBr minus chemical potential of H2 minus chemical potential of Br2. Those are all under standard conditions. On the left side of the equation, I'll collect all the RT log terms. So I've got RT log pressure of H2 over P0, RT log pressure of Br2 over P0. And if I take those and factor out the RT, when I bring the uh, product over to the left-hand side, it gets a negative sign, so I've got minus twice RT log of the pressure Br2 over P0. So now I've collected all the pressures on the left side and all the uh, standard state chemical potentials on the right side. If I rearrange those a little more, I've done two things here. First of all, the sum of these logs is the log of the product. So, I've, so instead of adding the log of H2 and Br2 and subtracting the log of uh, HBr, actually that's a typo, that should be HBr. Um, then when I combine those logs into a product, I have the log of this product, pH2 over P0, PBr2 over P0, and then HBr over P0 uh, since the coefficient is 2, that's the, the log of this squared, and the negative sign turns it upside down. So I've got pressure of HBr under P0, that quantity is squared. So those logs have combined um, into this term. On the right side, I have twice the chemical potential of HBr minus chemical potential of H2 minus chemical potential of Br2. Remember what chemical potential means. That's the partial molar free energy. So this is the difference between the partial molar free energies of product minus partial molar free energies of reactant at standard state conditions. So all that is is the, um, uh, and remember that partial molar uh, free energy uh, difference of products minus reactants, I can write that as the uh, difference when I undergo a reaction of the free energy. And we're talking about Helmholtz free energy here for constant T and V conditions. So this is just the change in the Helmholtz free energy uh, for this reaction under standard state conditions. So I'm writing it as delta A, molar delta A of the reaction. So the next step, uh, the P naughts on the left hand side, I've got a P naught twice in the denominator and P naught twice in the numerator. So when I combine those terms uh, together, bringing in a negative sign intentionally to flip that fraction upside down because I want the HBR to be on top. So on the left side, I've got minus RT log of this product, HBr squared over H2 and Br2, the pressures of each of those quantities. Next, I can move the minus RT over to the right-hand side. So I've got minus delta A divided by RT. And then to get rid of this log, I just uh, raise each side uh, in the exponent of an E. So the log disappears, and I've got this ratio of pressures on the left. On the right, I've got E to the minus delta A over RT. 
and re remembering that this is at constant t and v. This is a new version of our equilibrium expression, our equilibrium condition. The system will be at equilibrium if the chemical potentials of the reactants are equal to those of the products, which is equivalent to saying, after all this algebra, if the ratio of these pressures, HBr squared over H2 and Br2, is equal to e to the minus change in molar free energy over RT at constant T and V. If we had done all this at constant T and P rather than constant T and P, the only difference would be that we'd use uh, the Gibbs free energy rather than the Helmholtz free energy. So this is starting to look like some expressions you've seen before. This, um, for any particular reaction, the change in the free energy is some number. If I go ahead and calculate e to the minus delta G over RT and call that value K, which we can label the equilibrium constant, then I can, uh, we've discovered that this ratio of pressures, pHBr squared over pH2, pBr2 is equal to the equilibrium constant. So this looks familiar for two reasons. Number one, equilibrium constant is equal to pressure of the products squared because of the stoichiometric coefficient two divided by pressure of the reactants H2 and Br2. That looks like the equilibrium constant that you are familiar with. Uh, also, this is an equation that you've seen before. The equilibrium constant can be calculated from the free energy of a reaction. So now we see the reason why those things are true. The reason why the free energy has this relationship to the Gibbs free energy is because the Gibbs free energy is minimized at equilibrium. And the reason the equilibrium constant is the ratio of the pressures of the products divided by the pressures of the reactants is because uh, those derive from uh, originally the log of these pressures, which came from uh, this expression for the chemical potential, because we knew that the chemical potentials of the reactants and the products had to be the same. So we'll spend more time looking at this equation, what to do with this uh, expression for the equilibrium constant. But this is telling us that one way of knowing whether we're in equilibrium or not, not based on the chemical potential of the reactants and products, but the amount of reactants and products we have present in terms of their pressure. Um, the condition for equilibrium says that this particular ratio of the pressures has to be equal to the equilibrium constant. And what we'll see next is even if we're not dealing with ideal gases, uh, a very similar expression can be derived that doesn't happen to look like a ratio of pressures, but can still be useful in helping us solve these equilibrium problems.